Hi guys, this is Luke from MGN, and today we're talking about Guardians of Hylor. Look, I'm going to preface my review here by voicing my bias beforehand. MGN and the game's publisher and Freedom Games are all sort of part of the same network, and as such I received the free copy of the game in exchange for a fair and honest review. The second point of potential bias is that the game is exactly in my wheelhouse for genre preference, and as such my impressions and enjoyment of the game are going to be probably different from yours if you're unfamiliar or you're not a big fan of the auto battler genre. With that out of the way, I need to let you know that Guardians of Hylor is fun as hell. It's super addictive in like the best way. It's the type of game where you know you sit down to play for 10 minutes after work and then suddenly it's morning next February and you haven't bathed in several months. You know those type of games where you're sort of so engrossed the time just seems to fly by regardless of how much you've actually played. It's that kind of subgroup of games. I know I can't just say that without justifying why. So, I'll say that the gameplay itself is very drawing. You always feel like you're making progress, and that each level and the decisions that you make to augment and improve your characters will make you excited to play the next level afterwards. And that's something that snowballs in of itself and improves as the game goes along. Your improvements in team choices might seem small at the start, but as you, get, as you play on, you'll gain an understanding of just how important and influential your choices before and during a level affect the outcome and the result. The game will begin by letting you choose between four guardians. These will essentially represent yourself in the tug of war style battles, and you can also sort of consider them your boss monster, similar to how the enemy team will employ bosses during your matches. The four to choose from from the start fit the typical fantasy archetypes. There's the knight sort of defender type character, the damage from afar type archer, the damage dealing mage, and you've also got a healer in there as well. I like this initial choice. And as you begin to play the game, you can really, uh, you, you know, you start right off the bat by playing to suit your preferences. If you want your representative to reflect how you usually play in games of this nature, well then you can. Grab the healer as your guardian, and then spawn plenty of frontline tanks during your matches to keep that guardian safe, give them something to heal and power up, and just plow through all your enemies. Not the healer type, and you want to be a bruiser? Grab the shield wielding frontliner as your guardian, and you can augment him and power him up with like stuff like buffs and stuns, you know, just general bruiser abilities. Then once you're in a match, you can spawn plenty of healers to keep him alive, and then he'll just stay there annoying the enemy frontliners. It's great. Look, I could go on about the remaining initial guardian choices, but, you know, you get the idea. You can pick your playstyle right off the bat. And even the guardians themselves have several options within the character to make them more defined as well. Their abilities offer a different option in playstyle, so don't think you're pigeonholed into the role you expect them to perform. You know, specific parts within that playstyle can be improved and focused on specifically as you level up and you can augment that character. How you like, really. I really like this option to choose your preference in playstyle, you know, straight away, right off the bat. It's a satisfying feeling to sort of want to play within a specific archetype and then, you know, succeed in the level based off your plan. It's really rewarding. And this will be the first action that you take in game, and it sort of sets up your expectations for that level of satisfaction during your entire playthrough, really, of the game from your initial action. And that's a great move on the developer's part. Moving on to the battles themselves, which are a huge reason why I'm in love with GOH, and why the game is so playable and what makes time fly by so quickly when you're playing. Simply put, the game is incredibly relaxing without being too passive. What do I mean by that? Well, it's often a pitfall of the auto battler genre, or auto chess genre, that the gameplay becomes really detached from the player's actions, that your influence is sort of irrelevant. That's not the case here though. If you don't employ a genuine strategy, deploy your units actively, and make good and reactionary choices during a level, you're either going to fail, or you're going to get a score that reflects your level of input. What you do matters. What choices you make, what you prioritize, then the power of your units based on your choices, it all coalesces into making the game a blast to play and it really feels like your choices matter. You might think on the flip side of this how the active playstyle, you know, it might take away from how relaxing the genre is in general. This isn't the case though, all the best points of an auto battler and how chill they are, you know, they're still present in Guardians of High Law without going so far as to make the game dull I think. I wasn't overwhelmed by my choices, and I felt like my actions had a direct influence on the game's outcome without being so frantic that the experience itself wasn't relaxing. There's a good balance there. 
because i mean after all that's the reason i play and enjoy the genre but it is a delicate balance to toe the line between relaxing or being too passive or, or boring. I feel like Guardians of Hylor really balances the aspects of its gameplay against the, that genre really, really well. I say this because, you know, I've played the game at some length and I didn't really feel grinded down by the experience for playing several hours consecutively. Gameplay elements really didn't become dull. And during the session, I was still excited to improve my army in between each level and see what I unlocked to strategize for the upcoming level as well. I will say that the game's visuals might be a bit off-putting to those checking out the game for the first time, and yeah, they did little to impress me throughout my playthrough or my initial research of the game. The animations in the game, they, it feels very smooth, and it's going to be undemanding on your PC. You're going to be able to play at Guardians of a High Lore on, on just about anything, really. But I just wasn't a huge fan of the game's appearance. It reminded me a lot of the initial release of Adventure Quest, like visually, very visually similar. But that game was released in 2002. I don't think those visuals are a reason not to be picking up and giving the game a try though. Appearance aside, the game is incredibly fun and it has genuine depth. You're going to be getting plenty of hours out of the experience whether you're a fan of the auto battler genre or not. The satisfaction in planning out your character and team and using those decisions to pull off an impressive win, well, it's certainly there in droves. You're not missing out at all. If you're unfamiliar with the game or looking for something fun to eat up your free time, then I can absolutely recommend Guardians of High Law, and I suggest just having a look at the Steam store page. Look, that's going to wrap things up for our review. Make sure you let us know what you thought of the game yourself by reaching out, out to us on any of MGN's platforms. You know, we'd love to hear from you on the MGN.gq blog, uh, our YouTube channel, of course, the new MGN Twitter, at MGN underscore TV, and our Discord. As usual, links for all these can be found in the description of the video review. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you online in Guardians of Hylor. See you on the leaderboards.